welcome back to Love Your Shelf. Uh, last week I posted a video about travel books uh, that were non-fiction. So today I am making a video about travel books that are fiction. Um, so I did talk about non-fiction and how I do normally enjoy those books better. I was actually really surprised by the books that came up in my fiction pile as far as things that I would consider travel um, because some of them are actually some of my favorites as well. So I'm excited about that. Uh, first we're going to start with Jack Kerouac on the road. Um, and Mm, this is kind of nonfiction, <laughs> um, but there are some fictitious things, I suppose. Um, or I took a rock and roll and English class, so it was like two classes. It was 10 credits, um, which equals two classes. And it was about literature and uh, music and reading books that have to do with music. Um, so that was pretty cool. And On the Road is one of those books. Um, it's about a guy in the 40s or 50s or 60s. I don't remember which decade, if I'm being honest, but back in the day. And um, I fell in love with it. I fell in love with Jack Kerouac. I wish that I could just hitchhike all over the place and hang out with my buddies and be um, someone that just gets to travel and drink and do whatever he wants. Um, that's not what I am. <laughs> but, you know, one can dream. Uh, so I read this in my college years and it was everything I wanted it to be. And I fell in love with Jack Kerouac. So then this year I picked up Big Sur, uh, which is also fictitious, kind of. Um, and I wouldn't have called it Big Sur, if I'm being honest. Uh, he spends like half of the book not in Big Sur, but he does have a really good ending part where he talks specifically about, he doesn't talk about it, he makes noises with words um, to articulate what he hears in the ocean and the waves and the music that it brings to him. And that was my favorite part of the book. I actually um, read that part while I was outdoors, not at the ocean, um, but on what I call Endor, um, which is this little trail by my house that um, has just a ton of huge trees. Uh, so yeah, but Big Sur was sad actually because it's about him in his 40s like in on the road he's in his 20s and he's out doing a bunch of stuff with his friends and in his 40s his friends have grown up and he's still stuck where he is and he hates it and that sucks but that's reality too like if you're not growing up and constantly bettering yourself eventually you're gonna be in a place where you're not satisfied with where you are and what you're doing with your life so um it was good but it wasn't the Jack Kerouac I fell in love with in college. But to be fair, I'm in my 30s now, not my 20s. And uh, so it kind of got rid of some of the romanticism there that I had back in the day. So that was very interesting. Also, this book is beautiful and I found it after I read it and I couldn't not get it um, because it's just gorgeous. So yeah. Jack Kerouac, Big Sur. Uh, Big Sur is gorgeous. I've been there. I wanted to go there mainly because of Jack Kerouac. I knew that he had a book called Big Sur. I looked it up and I wanted to be there and we went there on my honeymoon. Um, I also found a restaurant named Nepenthe um, that we ate at and it overlooked the water and it was gorgeous. So that was awesome. Uh, the book is all right. <laughs> um, I really honed in um, on some misogynistic views that Jack Kerouac has that I'm sure he shows in On the Road, but when I was in my 20s, I was uneducated um, in that, so now I am, and I'm just like, he's not as great as I thought he was. But there it is, and I would still recommend it. Uh, he is still a good writer, uh, misogyny and lostness aside. Actually, with the lostness, lostness probably makes it better. So, On the Road Again and Big Sur. The Little Paris Bookshop, it's by Nina George. It's about a gentleman whose girlfriend leaves him and he has a bookshop and a very wonderful, 
like skill of being able to provide people with the books that they should be reading in that time. That's an amazing skill. I want that skill. Um, this book is beautifully written. Nina George writes a lot of things that I've enjoyed. She writes, mm, I've enjoyed what she's written. <laughs> she doesn't have too many books, but um, she does have a few and I've read them and I like them. So what really stuck out for me in Little Paris Bookshop is it's about, the plot is weird because it's about a guy whose girlfriend leaves and she left him with a letter but he didn't read the letter and then at the end it was like all this could have been avoided if you would have just read the letter at the beginning um so that's weird and so the plot's a little different but um i don't care because it's not about the destination it's about the journey and this journey is just beautiful and i'm glad that this gentleman got to grow in his process of grieving through his girlfriend and the loss of their relationship and in that process he got to see things he travels through he travels even though it's called a little paris bookshop he has a little traveling shop he goes on boats he um goes through the seine river he um goes to a bunch of different places so that's why I chose it as one of our fictional travel books because he does travel throughout uh, at least France. Um, I think he goes to a few other places in Europe, but I read this a while ago and I can't remember all of it, like all the places he stopped. Um, but in this book also, it has a lot of books that I had not heard of before. And when I look them up on Goodreads or Storygraph, they have a lot of good reviews. So it also added to my to be read list as though we need to add more <laughs> to my to be read list. Um, but yeah, so that was really cool too. I recommend this book. It's five stars for me. And um, I still think about it. I still think about the way he recommends books and who he recommended them for. And when I think about who I want to recommend books for or what books I want to recommend for people, uh, I think about him and try to process like my inner, what would he do? His name is Monsieur Perdo. What would Perdo, Perdue, Monsieur Perdu? what would Perdu do? <laughs> what would he recommend? So um, that's a really good book and I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, the next book I want to talk about is The River. This was also a five star for me. I read it last year. It's amazing. It's about uh, two best friends that canoe through the Amazon River and they end up meeting up with a couple that isn't what they seem and also there's fires going so they end up having to race through and there's a lot of stuff going on there and uh, it doesn't really talk so much about, I mean, there's bits and pieces of it where it does talk about being in the jungle, but a lot of it is just adventure between two friends. And I really enjoy that aspect of it a lot as well. Um, I, if you've read or if you've listened to my other books, I also mentioned the guide. So Jack is um, the main character in the guide and he's one of the two main characters in the river. Um, this is my favorite Peter Heller book and I've read a few of them and The River is hands down my favorite. It's really good. Um, also a five star for me. I definitely recommend it. The next book is Around the World in 80 Days um, by Jules Verne. We can't not talk about it. Um, so I read this book last year because I was trying to read a little more classic books. I try to read more classic books every year because you have to like there are so many of them out there and in order to be considered well read you need to read classics um i think so i read around the world in 80 days it was really good um i did enjoy it but i wouldn't give it five stars i think i gave it four maybe three and a half so he goes around the world in 80 days he has a bet with someone that he can do it and time's a factor in it and it's crazy because I'm not going to ruin the end end for you, but at one point he tears a boat apart to get where he needs to be. Like the boat that he's in, he's in water, tearing it apart to get where he needs to be. It's pretty cool. So um, he does do what he can do and 
things he doesn't expect happen along the way, which is true of any travel, uh, really. Um, he goes to a lot of different places. But there is a lot of cultural things that they do mention throughout the book, but it's more about a destination. Him, he has his destination. He has the goal to just get around the world in 80 days. So he's more focused on the destination of getting back and all these little things come up and it makes him focus on the journey itself. Um, and that's cool because it also has a competitive edge to it um, because he made a bet with someone and I like competitiveness. Um, and so it's good. And there's some weird characters in it. I think that's probably why I wouldn't give it a five is because I'm not in love with the characters. It doesn't have a lot of character development in it, but all in all, it's still a good story. The next book I want to talk about is Life and Other Near-Death Experiences by um, Camille Pagan. So I read this a long time ago. I don't remember all of it, but it is about a woman who finds out she has cancer and or I think it's cancer, some sort of disease um, around the same time that she finds out her husband cheats on her. So she decides to leave and live and she gets to do a lot of really cool things one of the things that she mentioned that i really want to do it's on my bucket list now is um swim with like bioluminescent algae essentially which doesn't sound hot but <laughs> i don't care it sounds really cool at night um she swims in the ocean where the bioluminescent um, algae and fungi and stuff light up and she gets to see that and swim in that and so that's definitely on my list it overall it was a really good like heartfelt warm book um, that I really enjoyed and so I would recommend that it's an easy read um, you aren't overly into the characters maybe like what they're going through um, but overall it's like a good adventure book um the next book is the curious charms of arthur pepper by phaedra patrick phaedra patrick actually just came out with another book called the messy lives of book people uh which i haven't read yet but i'm interested in that the curious charms of arthur pepper is about a man who becomes a widower and he finds some of his wife's things and kind of travels all over the place tracking down some stuff and he ends up being really sad because he feels like he caused his wife to not live her life fully um but in the end it it all works out and he ends up finding some things about his wife that he didn't ever know that made him not only love her more but understand her love for him more and that was also a good book um it's crazy because a lot of the books that i chose in here are about travel but with an underline of reimagining like recreating your life for a better life which is what travel does like it teaches you joy and culture and with that um you get to learn and become more of who you are and who you're meant to be um so that's really cool and i think that's like a really underlying thing in these fiction travel books that i have uh, the next one is south pole station by ashley shelby um so this is about a woman whose brother killed himself and she goes to Antarctica because it's been his dream and her dream since they were little. So her dad, their dad, um, like told them all these things about these great adventures in Antarctica. And that's what she's always wanted to do. And she's an artist. So she applies and she gets accepted to go to South Pole Station as an artist where there's a whole bunch of scientists. And this has a lot of political stuff with it as well, because um, there's like a scientist there who is drilling for specific purposes and like a lot of times people go to 
Antarctica for different researches, right? So there's like geological search researches and scientific researches and stuff like that. So he went for like a controversial reason, kind of, um, which I'm not going to tell you about that, but um, you can read it. And it, it was interesting. It's interesting how kind of everyone just becomes a family in this whiteness of nothing and cold and it's interesting how she's portrayed as an artist um and what she ends up making to remember the south pole station that she was at um overall this was a really good book as well it's weird it's not written as beautifully as some books it's not written as fast paced as some books um but it kept me sticking around like it was interesting and unique in its own way that it was written um and i didn't hate it for that which sometimes i i do i dislike books because of the way that they're written but um this book pulled it off um so i liked that a lot Another one that I didn't put on here that I will mention, though, because I just thought about it because they go to Antarctica, is Where'd You Go, Bernadette by Maria Semple. And this child that really wants to go to Antarctica and the mom has, like, huge anxiety about it. And I guess you could kind of say it's a travel book. Like, they stay in Seattle mostly, but at the end they do go to Antarctica and they actually go separately and have to find each other. So it's... A book with travel as the main point um, and then they end up going as, as their goal and it ends in Antarctica so that is I'd say that's probably a three and a half or a four book for me too I also saw the movie the movie was underwhelming uh, I definitely thought the book was better the last book we're gonna talk about is less by Andrew Sean Greer so I've seen this book on booktube a lot lately i read it like five years ago maybe i don't know when it first came out i was originally pretty disappointed in this book so this is why i picked up this book because i wanted it to be a travel book and it it was um <laughs> it's about a man who's about to turn 50 he gets a wedding invitation from someone that he was with off and on for like 20 years and or not 20 years nine nine years uh so he was off and on with someone for like nine years and he gets a wedding invitation and he says screw that i'm not gonna go i'm gonna just do whatever i can to get out of it so instead he's a writer and he books like a whole bunch of writing activities around the world essentially and he travels for a long time so that's what this book was introduced to me as i thought it was going to be like a real travel adventure book and he does do some things like he does go to egypt he does ride the camel um but it's not about his travel at all it's traveling helping him realize that he's made mistakes in his life and it's helping him face those mistakes instead of run away and become a better person through that and when i first read it i was underwhelmed and i was so upset because i wanted it to be like a good travel adventure book and instead it was a good 50 life crisis book um which is amazing like one he talks about how they're so this was written in the 2000, 2010s ish um so he talks about how really being gay was romanticized you can only be gay and young and like in the 80s there was aids and stuff so that is a lot of what we saw in society and culture like in movies and stuff when they're putting stuff out plays is younger people um and so it's weird to be old and gay which i never thought about um but that is like a it's a good point and i understand what they're saying through that um and it's also it's about recognizing the mistakes that you've made in life and knowing that it's never too late to change and this is a book that i read and 
I put it as like three stars and I could not stop thinking about it. Like after I read it, everything I did, all I could do was think about this book um, for like a good year, probably. And I still do think about it from time to time, but not as often as I used to. And so this is a five star book for me now. And they just came out with a new book. Uh, Andrew Sean Greer just came out with Less is Lost, um, like this month, I think. And I'm very excited for that. So those are my books about travel that are fiction. And what fiction books have you guys read that are travel? Do you enjoy travel books that are fiction or nonfiction more? Uh, let me know. And thank you so much for hanging out with me and talking about some books with me today. Um, I hope that you found something new that you might like or uh, based on these recommendations, maybe you have a recommendation for me too. Um, let me know and like the video if you like it. Subscribe if you like my channel. Let's talk about books, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Namaste.